Hey Kissy Crafters, welcome back for another Saturday Crafternoon. I hope everyone is doing well out there. And I see a lot of people in the chat already chatting away. That makes me really happy. So welcome, welcome everyone. So if you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Nancy with Gifts HQ and I host these weekly live sessions to talk about all things crafty. We talk about things from knitting, crocheting, decoupage, and so much more. And we like to share tips, tricks, and ideas just so if anyone has maybe a little Etsy shop or maybe you have a little craft fair coming up that you want to um, try to sell stuff with, or maybe you're just looking for some gifts for family and friends. This is the perfect channel for us to just put some thoughts together, share ideas, and kick around a few things that you can do that can either help make you some money or maybe you can just you know share it for some gifts for some friends so i hope you really enjoy our hour today um let's just say hello to a few of the friends that i see out there i see boricua sewing and crafts hey i see kathy crazy aka knitting nana i see donna phillips I see Jackie Hallman, Nana 31331, Nancy Diaz, Norman Lazaro, One Minute Tips, and Sassy, thank you again. And let's see, we've got a lot of things to talk about today. So um, last week, if you didn't catch it, it was our 50th live and it was our one year anniversary of streaming. And we had kind of a little celebration. I was super excited. And we had a lot of fun with that and we've got over 3,200 subscribers now and I'm so, so grateful. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. I can't believe it's been a year and I can't believe that, you know, it was our 50th live. So today's live number 51 and we had a couple things that we talked about on that live. So besides the celebrations that we were having, um, we looked at some peeker designs and some hooded towels. So if you didn't get a chance to catch that, go ahead and check that out because we had some pretty good discussions on it and it was a pretty neat little, um, little project that you can do either to sell or to give as gifts. So I hope you guys really appreciated that and I hope you, you really were able to enjoy it and follow along um, with some of those tips that we've shared. So we've got a couple things that we want to do this week so this week i thought that we would focus on reverse decoupage and not just reverse decoupage but we're going to do some reverse decoupage on glass and i kind of came up with all of that because if you can see behind me i've got a new little board up and so i was kind of decorating a, a little bit with paper and if, if you guys follow me on Facebook or Instagram or any of the other social media sites, um, you'll know that I also got a color laser printer. So we've been doing a lot of paper type crafts. So a lot of this stuff was kind of just mingling around and putting things together. And then I thought, wouldn't it be fun to just try to do some glass decoupage together? And I thought that would be really neat. So one of the things that we've been working on is we have been able to put together some designs. And so you'll see on today's live, you'll have some PDF attachments that you guys can use. And let me just show you some of those. So these are totally free. They were designed by my husband. And these are just some of the designs that you can get. So feel free to use them. This is just a peacock with some very pretty colors on there. I also have a few others that you can use. Now, it's decoupage, so you can use, you know, any of the, um, you can use photo or you can use any of the other designs that maybe you have. But if you're not sure exactly what to do, go ahead and download the PDF. It's totally free for you guys. And I just kind of put together different sizes, different colors, wasn't sure exactly what everyone would want to do. So I've got some wild flowers out here too. We've also got some hibiscus flowers with different sizes as well. We kind of put those together. And you can kind of mix and match, you know, do your own thing, or you can just totally not use the PDFs and, and you know, use something else if you have something else in mind. 
but these are completely free. So feel free to download them and use them. Here I've got some hummingbirds, different sizes as well. So I hope you guys, you know, can maybe use this for something. Um, I'll go through some of the steps that you'll need to do in order to kind of put together your reverse decoupage. But, you know, these are just kind of some little starter packs for you. You know, just some ideas. These are um, just made with a little bit of color here and there. So you want to do a lot of different colors that spark together. You know, some of them are kind of like rainbowish, a lot of things going on. Some of them a little more solid. You may want to just take the one flower, maybe two, um, maybe put some daisies, or just maybe you want to do just one large item, depending on the size of your actual project as well. So I wanted to make those available for you guys. So yes, it is free, 100% free. Go ahead and download it. We have it in the description for you. Um, this just, again, something that my husband and I created and we wanted to go ahead and distribute that for free for you guys so that you can kind of maybe follow along either with this video if you want to watch the replay or if you have some stuff around you that you want it to do and you have a color printer, then you can go ahead and print these out. Um, they've already kind of been sized and they will work really well depending on the size of the project that you're doing. So you just kind of play around with it, see which designs you'd like to use and please feel free to use it. So I hope you guys really enjoy these, but let me show you what I've been able to do with them. So there's a few different things that you can do this reverse decoupage on and I'm going to show you some examples now these are all going to be glass so this is just something that you can typically pick up at your local Walmart you can go to a thrift store you can go to Target I mean there's so many different places it is glass but um we'll be doing reverse decoupage so reverse decoupage will require us to actually put the motifs on the inside and then we'll be painting that and the outside will be totally um, glass on here so a little bit different from some of the other videos that i've done before like if you if you've done um if you've seen my video on uh, decoupage glass plates we're doing fabric plates it's it's similar to that where i am putting the design on the bottom of the plate so that the plate is actually food safe and you can use it, right? So this one is kind of reverse decoupage and I'm putting it inside and the glass on the outside totally is just glass. It's nothing going to be on the outside. So pretty neat. Um, you can get these at um, all kinds of places. There's all kinds of jars. You can target Walmart. Um, Dollar Tree, you know, that any place where you can get glass items, you can also do some clear plastics and I'll show you that as well. So let me just, I'm going to make some space here. Here's one that I picked up. I believe this one was at Walmart and they're not pretty, they're not expensive. These are maybe like five bucks. It wasn't too bad. So you have these. I like the size of this one because it's very large. One thing you'll have to be um, looking at is if you're doing reverse decoupage, you want to make sure that you can get your hand inside because you will be putting the motifs inside, painting inside. So your, your hand just has to be able to get in here. So I really love this size because it's round on the top, very open. I'm able to put my hand in and out and it doesn't bother me any um, but you can see here this is a really nice size you can do so many things with this if you're decorating let's say for Christmas or if you're going to put a candle in here or if you're going to put flowers I mean there's just so many things it's it's got endless amount of uses and so your decoupage doesn't have to cover the entire thing completely you can do some light stuff on the top with just motifs if you want, or you can paint it. So I'm gonna show you a couple different things that you can do with that. Let me put this over to the side here. Actually, I'm gonna leave it up here because we'll be picking that later. 
And let me just show you a couple more. Now, this are made out of plastic. They are not glass. This is like a clear plastic that you can get. And I got these at Walmart. These are just little containers that are stackable. I still have it in the plastic wrap. Haven't even taken it out. But, you know, these are large insert bins and it comes in a pack of two. Something as simple as this, you can decoupage, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. What I really like about decoupage is anybody can kind of go to the store and pick up either a vase or, or, you know, have something cute in their home. And what I like about decoupage, it's kind of like so unique. It's not anything that maybe the neighbor has, you know, it's like it's your own original design. So it really stands out and it kind of shows who you are and your personality. And, and you can put as much of it into it as you like. Let me just grab a drink here. I'm kind of struggling with my throat today. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. So again, all kinds of things that you can do. I'm going to show you another example. Let's see here. This is one that I picked up at Walmart as well. Again, this one is a plastic men. It is clear. These are stackable and you can get this at Walmart. And this is something that you can also just decoupage. Maybe you want to just put something on the side here if that's what's going to show here. Um, if you want to do it on the bottom, you know, it really depends what you want to do. It is all up to you on how you want to decorate it and what you want to use. But this definitely, you know, makes a big canvas for you. It's just like a huge canvas for you to be able to do stuff. So let's focus on one here that I'm going to be using. So let's see. I'm going to make sure I did not miss anything. Okay. So I think I got everything. Let's start with, you know, how do we get started on these things? And first I'm just going to kind of roll up my sleeves a little bit here. So I've got my little glass container from um, Walmart. And the first thing that you will want to do is you want to take some alcohol and you want to use the alcohol to clean the, the glass. And the reason why you're doing that, it's not that it looks dirty or anything like that. It's just that you want to make sure that you want to, you don't want to have any fingerprints or anything in the glass that's going to distort the image of what you're putting on there. So I would just go ahead, take some alcohol, grab a little um, paper towel or something, and then just go ahead and clean the inside. The good thing about the alcohol is it dries super fast. So, you know, you don't have to worry about waiting for it to dry, but I'll go ahead and just give it a good wipe down on the inside. You want to just take out the fingerprints, make sure there's nothing in there, you know, and then just after you've wiped it down, you can pretty much put the alcohol to the side because that's really all you need it to do is just have a quick little cleaning of the actual glass that you're going to be doing again all it's going to do is just kind of put it to this put it, this all put out all of the um little particles or any little fingerprints that you may have on it and get it out of the way so that it doesn't fall it doesn't come through when you're actually putting your project together okay all right so once you have that ready to go um, the next thing you're going to do is cut, it, cut out your motifs. And so, of course, I've given you guys the PDFs that you could use, but there's so many more that you can do on your own as well. Um, and here's some that I already have cut out. So let me put these over to the side. Okay. Now, when you're cutting them out, there's all kinds of different ways that you can cut them out. Some people prefer to just use a little blade that you can pick up from the dollar store. 
All right, this is kind of a exacto knife type thing. You can just cut it out that way if you're comfortable with that. Uh, this is not my preferred method. Um, you can just use a pair of your scissors. Of course, you don't want to use those fabric scissors. You want to use your crafting scissors. So go ahead and grab those. Um, or some people like to use a rotary cutter. You know, it's whatever is more comfortable for you and your hands. Now, depending on the design that you are picking, you know, you may have to kind of cut in and get into these little crevices to kind of pull out what you want on your design. So here's just a few that I've cut out. And I've got a few extras here as well. Let me see. Got some here. So these are just a couple and you can see how intricate some of these things can be, you know, depending on what your actual design is, you know, you want to try to cut it out and just cut the actual design. You don't want all of the background with it because you're not just taking a piece of paper and slapping it on the vase. You're actually trying to create something or a, think of it as creating a scene of your own. So you're going to take all of these little designs and create something like you can create a little garden. You can create, you know, there's so many things that you can do. I mean, I just have flowers and birds and things like that, but there's tons of other things that are out there. Um, you can even just be creative if you have a picture, maybe of your family and you want to do something with your family on there. You can do that, too. That that can be fun. You know, there's all kinds of things you can do. I like to just kind of do things together. So I wanted to kind of um, do a little project with my son. He's, he's been a little down with everything that's been going on lately. So, you know, he he's trying to adjust. He is autistic, um, which I've shared with you guys before. And so since my dad passed away, maybe about a month, um, over a month ago now, um, he's still kind of coping with that. So I wanted to make different projects with him so that he could kind of, you know, get his mind off of it a little bit and just kind of focus on just something else. So, you know, the, I thought this was the perfect type of project to kind of get him involved and get him to do just a little something, spend some time, um, quality time with each other. So this was the little project that we put together. And so we put, you know, all these little motifs and we cut them out and I helped him cut some of these out a little bit. And so then the next thing that you do, once you actually cut out everything, um, you're going to want to also, oh, one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, one more thing that you can do um, with these motifs. I have a little, um, I know there's a name for it, I call it the fan brush. I forget the exact name of this brush, um, but it's something you can pick up also at the Dollar Tree. And these little fan brushes are great because what you can also do if you want to get that antique-ish tear look effect, um, you just dab it in some water. And then once you dab it in the water, then all you're going to do is take that and just kind of brush the edges of your motif and then just kind of tear it with your fingernails. And what that does is that creates that kind of tearing effect. And so when you have that tearing effect, it gives it that kind of antique-ish look. So that's something that you can also do um, when you're cutting out. And I see a couple questions on there. JLo's asking, are you able to cut it with the Cricut or the Silhouette? Absolutely. Yes, you can do it that way too. If you have the paper, you just put it on the mat. If you're designing something on your Cricut Design Space, then you can go ahead and and cut it out that way too if you don't want to have to hand cut it yourself you know that's another way you can go about it and then once you have those motifs or if you want to design different shapes and things like that you can cut those things out because these are just the pieces that you're going to be placing as part of your design so i'm going to show you a little bit about what i mean by that so let's see um let's talk about how we would lay out the design so this is how you know, all your different options on cutting. And I'm going to kind of just see if I can move this over to the side here. There we go. 
let's move all our cutting materials out of the way and let's talk about the layout so this is the layout of one design that we have so here is as you saw on the pdfs that i'm attaching in the description this is the peacock and you can see that i cut it off a little bit because this size i wanted it to be a little bit smaller because my vase was a little smaller so i went ahead and kind of cut it and i kind of teared a little bit so it looks like it's kind of just coming out of the bottom of the glass so you know, that's something that, you know, you can adjust it depending on the size of your vase or, you know, whatever object you're trying to decoupage it on. And you can see here, we've put the motif here. And then I just added a bunch of flowers, little different things all over the place. And, you know, you can put as much or as little as you want. It doesn't have to be flowers. It could be, you could just leave just the peacock and just, you know, leave it like that. But it really just depends what you want to do. You know, this is something that, you know, just in itself, just putting the motifs on, you've already changed the layout. So you basically went from something like this, which was just plain, to having something like this. You know, it's just such a difference, you know, and, and you can really make it your own. You can do with anything that you want. If you want to print pictures with your color laser printer, you can do that. Um, just note, you know, there there are certain, um, if you have a, um, if you don't have a color laser printer and there's other um, printers that are out there, like inkjets, those things may bleed. So you don't want to kind of interact with that. So definitely, you know, look at, you know, the type of motifs that you're using, the printers that you have. Um, you can also go to magazines if you've got magazines out there. Um, cut out different pictures that you see in the magazine that you find interesting. People use gift wrap paper. I mean, there's so many things that you can use. I mean, a lot of people maybe will give you a gift and then you may just look at the gift wrapping paper because you want to decoupage that. So <laughs> if you think about it, it's like you're getting the gift. Plus the gift wrap paper is actually something you can decoupage. So that's something that, you know, you can also use. So if you sometimes someone gives you a really pretty gift wrap and you're like oh this is so nice you know don't think about just tossing it you can also use it to decoupage so you know things like that you can use and just remember it's just about being unique it's just about you know having something of your own that you created yourself and it's just not storable so that's just some of the ideas that i have so I went ahead and I laid these motifs off and I'll just show you a little bit on how you can do that. Let me, let me just grab the big one here. So that is one that's laid out and I've already cleaned this with alcohol. And then it's as easy as just kind of laying your designs out, you know? So what you would like to do ideally is when you're trying to figure out how to put out or lay out your design um, one of the best things to do is to go ahead and grab some painters tape and with some painters tape you can just take a bit of painters tape and put after you've cut out all your motifs you know just kind of decide where is it that you want to lay out what what you want it to look like so let's say i just wanted to focus on this flower i would just take some painters tape and on the outside i'll go ahead and put it and then I'll decide, well, is this the look that I want? You know, do I want to add anything? You know, there's so many things that you can put on here. Do I want to have the bird on here? You know, it, this is where it's all you. You know, you can design any way you want. But once you've figured out what you want to do, like say I want to just put this flower and maybe I'm just going to put like maybe, I don't know, a bird or something later, you can do that. But once you've decided and you put all your motifs and you kind of laid it out the way you want, you can kind of take a step back and look to see if you like the way it looks. And if you do, then you're ready to go ahead and apply the motifs into the inside of the glass. So I'm gonna just show you how you would do that and i'm using 
I'm using the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And let me just give you a close up of that. You can pick this up at your local craft store, or at Walmart. You know, they pretty much sell them everywhere in Amazon. Um, they even have the bigger bottles. It depends on, you know, how much stuff you're doing. You know, people use decoupage. I mean, decoupage is such an old craft. Um, people call it the poor man's craft. You know, people um, sometimes could not afford, you know, these luxury paintings and things that people had out there. So people designed their own by getting something like Mod Podge and there's different types of glue that you can get it doesn't have to be Mod Podge you can even make your own there's different um recipes out there on how to make your own Mod Podge and and you know things like that and this is just this specific brand but i enjoy using Mod Podge it's kind of works for me and it's pretty um relatively priced well so you know i go ahead and i use this one but you can grab all the different designs from, like I said, magazines and things like that, and just create your own. And so people would create their own art because, you know, they couldn't afford these like thousand dollar paintings and million dollar paintings that are out there today. So you can really make something that's so unique and beautiful for your own home or for a gift or friend. And, you know, it's just a nice way of just kind of um, letting them know that you spent time thinking about them and made something that was specifically for them that, you know, maybe they, it's as a specific design that they like. Maybe it's a sport, maybe it's a, you know, a picture of something that you know that really speaks to them. And so you can take that and kind of play with the different designs that you can get off of that and then create your own um, design on any type of project. So now, Let's get back into this. So we've got our little layout. Let's just say that I'm just going for the one flower, <laughs> right? So I would then take my Mod Podge and I'm going to grab just a little sheet of paper just to kind of protect my area. So if you have butcher paper or if you have, um, you know, an area that you know, you don't want to kind of destroy, just make sure that you um, cover that surface so you don't get Mod Podge all over the place. So I'm going to dump out a little bit of Mod Podge into this small container. And let me just close it up here. And then I'm going to grab a little brush that I picked up from the dollar store. Um, they've got tons of brushes. This is one of my favorite ones because it's very easy to use and it doesn't flake off you know sometimes the little um things flake off and this one's pretty sturdy and it does really well and so i'm going to go ahead and go with this one i'm going to take off that painter's tape i'm going to lay it flat grab some mod podge here and you don't even really need all that much you just need enough to cover the surface so i'll go ahead and apply the mod podge on the front of that design. And then once you have that, you go ahead and take it off. And now we're doing reverse decoupage, so I'm going to go ahead and put that here since I've decided where to put it. And then I'll go ahead and lay it on the glass and I will tap it gently with my fingers on the back. And then you're going to want to just kind of rub it from the inside out because you want to make sure that, you know, it's laying completely flat. So let me just move this over a little bit. So I'm just rubbing my hand up against it. Make sure that your edges are nice and flat. And if you put too much Mod Podge on it, you'll have Mod Podge everywhere. Don't worry because Mod Podge does dry clear, but I would still go ahead and take a little tissue on the back and just pat it. You want to kind of remove that excess if you have any. Now, if you have a flat surface that you're using, you may want to grab a brayer and just kind of roll it. That way you can make sure you can get all of those things off. But something as simple as this, and we've already changed the actual look of the 
vase itself. You know, it doesn't necessarily even have to do anything else. You could totally leave it like this if you wanted to. So, you know, definitely make sure that, you know, after you've cleaned it with that alcohol and you've laid out your design and you go ahead and put your Mod Podge on there, you know, you want to leave this and have it dry at least for a couple of hours. Like I, I know it depends on how big of a design you have. Um, Mod Podge dries pretty quickly, so you really don't need all that much time, but I do like to let my vases sit for 24 hours before I pick it up again. So let me just go back to this one here that I have that has already been sitting for a while. And so the next thing you want to do, like first you can totally leave it the way it is clear with the different colors. You know, that would be totally fine as well, but we want to add a little color to this. So I went ahead and I picked up a couple of paints and here's some that you can use. Now this is the Waverly Chalk White. I picked it up at my local Walmart and you want to make sure that you're using chalk paint if you are painting on glass. If you try to use the acrylic paint, while it will work, it will um, go on what will happen is it does rub off. So if I were to rub my fingers or my hand against the glass, I could literally take off the acrylic paint because the uh, paint, the acrylic paint is not going to um, adhere well to the glass itself. This is another, this one's an ivory color that I picked up. It's also by Waverly. Again, these are in Walmart. I believe this size was maybe about seven, eight bucks, um, but this is, a lot and goes a lot a long way um they didn't have the colors that i wanted in the smaller bottles but they totally have smaller bottles that you can pick from this one is a wicker white and you can see on the smaller bottles they have an indication um if you see a little glass on here they kind of indicate that this is a paint that you can use on glass so that's a great way of kind of you know double checking to make sure that you know it will adhere to that and then they have other things these are um, sterling silver and also gold these are metallic paints that can also be used on glass and I could use these kind of like as a little accent so these are some of the colors that I have got a silver and I have a gold okay so let's grab some of these. And the next thing I want to do is I want to grab a sponge. And I went ahead and got a sponge from just from Walmart. I got one in your kitchen. You can just grab that. I cut it up into pieces because I like them small so I can work a little better. And you want to apply the paint using a sponge. You don't want to apply the paint using a brush because I don't want the brush strokes to come out on the glass and by using the sponge it really looks a lot nicer much more professional looking so let me just grab another little cup and i'm going to pour you know what we're gonna do ivory this time let me just give it a quick little shake here and it's kind of new. You do have to pop it open. Now this project's going to get a little messy here, which is totally fine by me. <laughs> I'm going to just drop a little bit on here. And if you don't use it all, you can totally put it back in the container. Set that to the side. I've already got a little bit of a mess on my hands, which is okay. Let's see if we've got a little tissue here. Okay. All right. Let's just set this to the side as well. All right. So 
this is what we're going to be working on. So I've got my little paper here. That'll help me out as well. Again, I'm not going to be using my brush. I will be using the sponge. And so what I'm going to do is take the sponge and just kind of dip it inside. And then I will kind of just take off the excess a little bit because I don't want too, too much on there. And then I'm just going to take my base and I like to start from the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and just do the bottom here. Let me just position myself. And then just take the sponge and just dab it. Dab it all the way around. No real rhyme or reason to it. Just go ahead and dab it around. And again, my, my motifs have been here for at least 24 hours, um, but you don't want to do is you don't want to try to do this after you've just put in the motifs on and the Mod Podge is still wet because it will, it will, it will not work nice <laughs> at all. So now I'm just going to take this and I am just going to kind of roll it around a little bit, grab some more of this paint, pull out the excess, and then just kind of go around. And you're just dabbing it all over the place. Okay, and we want to get into those little corners. Make sure you get in there. And you'll start to see how the base is already changing. And you can see here we had the clear and now got this ivory coming out here. So you're just going to totally go all the way around here. Take your time doing this. I know my son had a lot of fun putting it together. <laughs> Kids really love this stuff, so it's a great way to kind of, you know, get with the grandkids and, you know, put something together with them. They enjoy these types of projects, so definitely a fun family event that you can have. And you've already see how it's changing, you know, and I'm just going to keep rotating as I go around. Grabbing some more paint along the way. starting to see how it's changing and you can do these with all kinds of colors you know you could do um, colors that just kind of pop that would make it really nice as well And this was a pretty forgiving project as well, because if you miss a spot, like you can always go back and kind of do it again. You know, it's, it's really forgiving. Like you can really just like not worry about making a mistake on this. My butcher paper is trying to get away from me here. <laughs> okay. So I did it very quickly. Um, so I would usually take a little bit more time 
to do it. But as you can see here, we've already changed this completely. You know, you see how now it's just covered and it looks really beautiful. I mean, you can really make so many different designs with this. I mean, look at this. This is gorgeous. And there's so many more things that you can do. Now the inside will be completely ivory. And what I would typically do is I would let this dry and then do another coat. I would prefer to do two coats of it just so that, you know, it really takes that color in. Let's see. You can see a couple little places that I probably will want to add, but you get the idea. Like we pretty much will just go around and dab it and then you will have your completed design. And once you have that, you can see how it totally changed completely. So I think it looks really pretty. So I'll give you a little close up of it. It's still a little wet. So but it's gorgeous. Completely changed it. You know, and it's now something that you can give as a gift, you know, can make it really, really nice. Someone that, you know, maybe loves peacocks or the flowers, or maybe this is a nice color theme for their house. Or, you know, there's so many different things that you can do with this that, you know, you can just kind of make it into whatever you need it to be. Now, some of the other things we talked about on here is the metallic paint. So once this dries completely and I've given it a second coat, what I would then take is these metallic paints. This one's gold, this one's silver. I'll most likely use the gold, maybe give it a little trim on the top. You know, I won't go too crazy with it, but one thing you can do is just put a little trim on it or, you know, wherever you think it would accent your piece and so just doing that just gives it that little extra something to give now i see donna saying disposable rubber gloves are good for a messy paint job they are and you know i thought about using the gloves but i'm kind of a like gotta get in there kind of person <laughs> i could do the gloves but the gloves just bother me <laughs> like they get in my way and i want to get in there so I don't mind getting a little dirty, so I'm fine with it. Um, but totally, if you want to use gloves, you can. This would be a perfect project so, so that you don't get all messy. I just kind of worry more about my craft space and putting the butcher paper down and making sure this doesn't get um, messed up. But I'm totally like that. I'm just, <laughs> I like to get my crafts going and I like to, you know, just getting a little dirty is all fine for me. So I really don't mind it, <laughs> but you know, I kind of work better with, with, you know, nothing on my hands, but you know, definitely, you know, you can put this with, um, gloves or, you know, you can use it with your hands. The, the paint does wash off pretty easily. You know, I just get in there with, um, I get in there with the soap and water and it'll come right off. It's, it's, I don't worry about it. So um, I'm fine with it. See, I got a little paint here in the front because my hands were wet, but nope, I think I got it off now. See, it's pretty forgiving. So, you know, let's say I want to go back and maybe I want to change the color or I want to, you know, do this completely different. You can totally wipe everything down and start all over again and do a completely different design. But, you know, with the designs that I gave you on the PDFs, you know, you can do something like this or you can make your own thing so it's something that's a quick little project that you can do with your friends family um you know some people like to do that uh painting uh party things you can do a decoupage party and just see what everybody comes up with you know it's totally inexpensive you can get you know these items like i said from the thrift, thrift store the dollar store you know things like that you know, that's totally something that you can do and it's just a lot of fun and a good way to pass the time and spend some time with friends. So let's see. 
I see a couple of people chatting away about this. Oh, Donna says, I decoupaged a wood lid for a glass jar. My husband cut the round lid slightly larger than the opening, then routed an insert. I post the picture. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Donna. Definitely. That's something that you can do too. And I've seen people do that um, with buttons. You know, they take a little button jar and they'll do, you know, with the little wood lid, you know, they can put like a piece of fabric and make that um, a place for you to be able to stick your pins in and then they decoupage on the glass jar itself. I've seen that too. So it's, I think it's really cute. You know, it's, it, there's so many things that you can do. So many different size items. There's so many different um, materials that you can use because it doesn't necessarily have to be glass itself. You know, it can be, you know, any type of item. Wood, you can decoupage with napkins if you don't have a laser printer you don't want to do it with a laser printer if you have napkins that you can buy at the dollar store or walmart target you know any of those places and they have a very pretty design you can use that as well now the napkin is pretty um it's it's pretty uh how can i say it's really delicate so when you're using it you have to be very careful because they do break very easily but you know with the laser printer i'm able to just kind of cut these designs out and you know kind of get it done you know pretty good and it doesn't you know i don't have to worry too much about it being so delicate you know you do have to worry about when you place it because when you place it you know you don't want to place it and then have to pull it back off because you could leave the color on the glass and then you'd have to start off with a different motif because it'll just you know come out <laughs> <laughs> won't be a good won't be a good result there <laughs> so i hope you guys like this let me just give you a little close-up look on this again you can see here different flowers you've got the peacock it's just cute oh donna says rice paper napkins are used on to decoupage on ball shaped christmas ornaments yes um, we talked about mulberry paper um, a few episodes back. I'm not sure exactly which one it was, but um, we talked about mulberry paper. You can use mulberry paper as the backing. That's absolutely beautiful. I love mulberry paper. It's really a nice paper to work with um, for decoupage as well. So um, let me show you guys one. This is the one that my son made as he was doing it with me and the one that he made um it's a smaller vase i actually picked this up at the thrift store and it still needs that second coat we've only did one coat on it and so he wanted to put the birds on here and so you'll see here we kind of picked out where it should all go and then we just kind of pulled it together you know and it's it's a small vase so it's you know small little motifs all the way around but you know it was just spending that quality time with him and putting the little project together it's something that was fun something that he made he can be proud of you know so i thought that this was a nice way to spend some time with him and he seemed to enjoy it so i i thought it was pretty cute so we're probably going to be doing a second coat and then maybe putting some accent on this maybe a little bit of metallic on the top i'm not quite sure what he's going to want to do but what i'm going to do is once this is completely done i'll take pictures and i'll post it on our facebook group so that you guys can see it as well and i think that's all i have for you guys today let me check to see if i missed any tips on here Let's see we talked about using chalk paint not acrylic paint and a sponge, not a paint brush. So definitely those tips. Um, this is again, just a regular sponge. I just cut it out, you know, cut pieces of the sponge and then was able to dab it around. And that's what you can use just to get this done. So, you know, it's, it's a nice little project that you can do. It's a lot of fun with some friends and it just makes things a little bit more unique. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, and we're going to be continuing our weekly Saturday Crafternoons and our trivia. 
So if you haven't, um, if you're new and you haven't participated in the trivia, please go ahead and do so because we'll be picking out who's going to be our third quarter trivia master. And that'll be at the end of September. And we'll be giving the announcing the winner on the first week of October. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining and I hope to be crafting with you soon. Bye everyone.